G'day and welcome back for more Scrapyard Survival. Last time we, uh, <laughs> uh, had the fun with the forklift. That I'm just going to leave aside for a minute because I've been putting a bit of time thinking in thinking about the hitch on the crane truck and maybe even doing a bit of work on the crane truck as a whole. Before I do any of that though, it's almost 4am, which means I can go scrapping soon because it'll be daylight. And then when that daylight runs out, I'm going to come back here with a whole bunch of extra light around here, I hope, which I should probably think about adding in right now. Uh, how can I add some lights? Because I want to build in this area and it'd be nice to be able to see more. And I'm thinking... I might have an idea of how to do that in a way that could look interesting. Especially if I build, say, a rotor on the front here, above this gate. Build it in the place of the block right there. And then I've got a small grid and then I can put a few spotlights onto hinges that I can put them onto this this area out the front here, which would be nice. All right, let's, uh, yeah, let's see if I can get this lighting sorted out before daylight comes. Uh, let's get a few bits and pieces. Mm, is that still going to... Yeah, I think that'll still look all right on the other side. I like the idea of being able to hide the rotor in here. That's what... Nope, not add regular rotor head. Add small one. Small head. There we go. Okay, so that works. We'll build a couple of blocks across. I'll make myself a bit more of a platform up here to build from. Should probably turn my lights on. That might help. I'm talking about adding lights and I don't even turn my own lights on. Good job, Splitty. Good job. So, I need them to point downward a bit. So that'll mean a hinge this way. And then I could just put a little bar across here, I guess. The reason I'm using spotlights instead of searchlights is spotlights have a much wider beam and that's what you need for area lighting. I don't want to use something that's got a really narrow beam on it because that won't really work. Just have a little bit of pitch down. I really like this spot here because I can hide this rotor in here while still covering up the backside of it on the inside. I can build up these blocks here to cover up the front side and then I've got nice little small grid conversion and it's in a pretty good spot to light up this area, I think. Uh, what I'll do is, I think, place one spotlight here. Uh, I'm just trying to think whether I want the beams horizontal or vertical. Let's see how it looks. So that's... Actually, that's pretty good. All I need now is another hinge on the side here. Another hinge on the side here. And then I can put a spotlight like that. No, I want it horizontal like the other one. Like that. And one like that. And then when I build up these hinges, I can get them to a good angle for this. And then I should have the three lights, kind of creating a nice broad swathe of spotlight down here, which at least, if I'm looking this way, will make everything feel a lot brighter at night. And if I can then figure out where else... Oh, I welded up the wrong bit. If I can figure out where else I can fit a lighting system like this in, I should be able to get more than just this angle covered, which would be good. I'm just trying to rush and get this done before the sun comes up, because once the sun comes up, I won't be able to tell. Wait till they separate a bit. So about there. Yeah. That's pretty good. Like, for just a triple spotlight up there, this adds quite a lot of extra lighting to the area. I'm really happy with that. Cool. Something I realized, and then... <laughs> something I realized during my edit is that I did this hitch for the flatliner, which is the flatbed truck. I did this hitch all wrong. Um, and it was then confirmed to me with several comments saying, I did this hitch wrong. <laughs> I should be able to... Just have a simple hinge here, and then put my simple fixed arm on it, and put the rotor at the other end, which will make it a lot easier to fit stuff around here. I'm not going to do too much on this right now, 
I'm just going to make something really simple to test it. Because I do want to make this look nice later on. As in, after I've done my little scrapping run for the day. Because when you've got the opportunity to scrap, you've got to take it. Uh, so we do want the roll rotor on this bit. That I know for sure. And then we go like this, and then we can put another rotor on, which will give us the turn. And that'll be good enough. Followed by our hinge to grab on to the truck. I'll bring the truck around, grab it, and even though this is a bit shorter than before, this should still work very nicely and not run this into the rest of the crane truck. Aha! I think I've got it. Yeah! Alright, we're attached. That means we turn that off. Turn that off. Turn that off. And lift this up a bit, and then go scrapping. I don't know exactly what it is I'm looking for right now. Nope, nope, up. Need more torque. Too high. Okay. Disconnect. Test this out quickly. Yeah. That works better, because now the control point is actually behind the truck. I should be able to pretty much fully jackknife this. Yes! Look at those rotors working together. That looks so good. Ooh, jiggles. Okay, let's go find some stuff. I will fix you later, forklift. I promise. Wouldn't mind getting lucky and finding some um, medium cargo containers today. I haven't noticed any scrap around, so hopefully I will find some soon. The trailer's a little bit more stable, given the extra width. It's obviously not going to be as stable as it would be if I went the full width, but eh, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. Oh, there is something this way. One of the things I'd really like to do is fix up the back end of this crane truck so that the um, tow hitch looks more part of the vehicle rather than tacked on like it currently does and also start putting some shape around it nearly all of the blocks the armor blocks on this are full cube blocks that's just a bit lame i should be doing more than that oh what direction we got hang on i'm gonna turn and face that direction while i know what direction it is so i have to face my cockpit that way so i want to go between south and south southwest. Alright, what is this here? What do we have? We have a plane. That is chunky. And that is a large thruster. We have a timer block and we have an event controller. I will take you. I'll hack you first. Onto the truck it goes. Oh, actually, I forgot to do something. Mag plate. These are need to have auto lock off. Right, now. Auto lock's off, which means I can put this on there and then set it to lock when I'm ready. Is that on a spot? Yep. Lock. And locked. Cool. So one of the reasons I didn't want all of these set to auto lock and then have the whole lot able to lock and unlock is that I have a tendency to lock things in weird positions when I bring a crane down to lock onto them. So if say a battery is locked by its corner I don't want to have to unlock and lock the whole tray to lock the next thing on. This way having segments I can do that much more easily and safely. Let's see if there's anything up in the rear end of this plane. Let's turn my lights on. Get through this door. Now I'll get the crane onto that thruster. And then I've got two large thrusters. Assuming the other one hasn't exploded somewhere, which I don't think it has. I'm still at the front of my base last I checked. Last I took notice, I should say. Ooh, medium cargo container. Nice. And a small cargo container. What's in that? Nothing. I was saying this is what I'd like to get for this trip, so I am very pleased. Yeah, you come. And I'll put you straight on the truck, I think. Anything on the top level? Doesn't seem like it. I think that's all pretty much rusted out. I just gotta get this thruster out now. 
Oh, wait, no, there's a whole lot of computer stuff up here. What do we have up here? My grinder is gonna be busy. There's a couple of small cargo containers, a couple of time blocks, which I can just grind out, take their computers. There's a ton of stuff in here. Um, the custom turret controller I should probably cut out. Oh, grid, nice. Event controller number two. Just chuck that off the side for now. See if I get anything good in this cargo container. A little bit of ammo. And the custom turret controller. And then I think it's just grinding the rest of it down to take the computers. <laughs> I'm just tossing stuff off the side with that. It's so much fun. Right, they're all ready to be locked. Unlocked, locked. Nope. Locked. No! No, I did a dumb. I need a... Oh, poop. Um, right. I need a lock and an unlock, not a switch lock command. Because if I have a switch lock command, the thing that's already locked will unlock when the thing that needs to be locked locks. Ugh. Okay. I need to keep that in mind. I think I might try and cut out one of these conveyor lines up front here this cargo container so what I'm thinking is getting rid of this one because it'd be nice to get the conveyor lines the Energy cargo the whole way down as uh, step one as the next step I should say come on get in there there we go okay we got it bring it up can I reach over that kind of Sort of, maybe. Alright, so on my second hotbar here, what I did was I actually set these to just lock. Because I should be able to unlock them using the switch lock on the truck or using a combined command later on. So if I press 6, that should now have locked the ones that can. And I can then unlock, get the crane out of here, stack it back in, and head off to that other marker that I saw. Which was over this way, about four kilometers. We're at 9.30 in the morning, so I've still got plenty of time to collect stuff. My thoughts with my crane truck are that I'm going to start at the rear, doing styling and putting the proper hitch on, start moving forward from there, and gradually get to the point where I'm going to completely redo my crane. Ooh. Oh. Oh. I was hoping there was... I keep finding the same flatliner. Yeah. Now, a lot of people want me to take one of these and slap it on the side of this and make a dual version, but I don't really want to do that. I am, however, tempted to bring this home anyway so that I could possibly use this as another truck. If I need to have a throwaway truck for another mission or something like that, I guess I can just grab it, stick it on the back. Yeah, let's pick it up and put it as far back as I can. I get it just on the back row. Ooh, front's lifting up. Let's spin it. <laughs> Doing from here, you can definitely see that those outriggers that I've talked about a few times will probably be useful. Okay, we're good. We are locked. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, do I go for that one that was on the other side of the frosty battery that I saw? I guess so. Away we go. I think I've gotten that balanced enough on the trailer, I hope. <laughs> it's a bit awkward. I think it's close enough. To middle, so that it's not going to tip if I turn left. Because I think most of the mass is actually at the back. I'm sure we will discover soon whether I'm right or wrong. When I rip off the front of the truck at some point. <laughs> uh. Oh, I spot something on the horizon up there. I don't know if that's someone's home, though. Let's go check it out. Actually, if I get high enough off, I'm high enough, high enough off, high enough. Oh, ooh. that was definitely the front end of the truck that just hit the ground there. Whoops. If I get high enough up, I might be able to use my searchlight again to spot that. Oh, that could be something. No definite signs of habitation yet. Oh, nope. Looks inhabited. Oh yes, this is definitely inhabited. <laughs> I'll 
mosey on by. Should probably stop driving along the same routes and actually, you know, pick a specific heading, go that way, and do like I did on that last long journey where I did a whole lot of scrapping to and from a place. Because that did seem to be a better way to not... Uh, continually get <laughs> misled by finding people's homes. Oh. Oh, what's that? I can actually tell what that is from here. Oh, there was something over there. Nope, missed it. Nope, spotted it. Um. Okay. There is something over there. There's something over there. That one I can probably find again. This one I probably can't. So if I head back to the mountain after I go to this one, then I should be able to get to that. As long as I just follow it around the side. Whereas this is somewhere out in the middle of the dunes and I'm never going to find it again. Nope. Okay. Using that as a crest of ridgeline is not super helpful. Okay. There are a couple of vehicles on top of this. One of them's a jalopy and the other one is... I don't know. Alright. I'll use the crane to climb up there and see what's here. See if there's anything I really want. Um. Hmm. Do you have any intact batteries on you? Oh, you have one. And the rest of these are smashed. That's got one power cell on it. That is a nice, tidy little body to work from. What about you? You've got thrusters, so I probably want to bring you down. And power cells. And more power cells. Might try and cut this in half, this truck, so I don't have to bring the whole thing. So I don't know how easy it's going to be to reach up here and just grab part of this, but... I would rather not have to bring the whole thing. But I also don't want to break up those thrusters and make them harder to move. Move. Come on. Come on. This way, I'll have to repair the road so that I can actually push this thing. <laughs> yeah. I thought I had that right. I did not think that was going to explode when I threw it down there. And I was thankfully right. I'm actually just going to take the battery from this. I've been thinking about my light source thing around the base. These small batteries might actually work out to be quite a useful way of doing those. Because I wonder how long a fully charged one of these lasts powering a spotlight. Or a searchlight. No, probably a spotlight. Because if it lasts a decent amount of time, I could totally use one of these. Maybe attached to a connector so that I can recharge it. And periodically recharge some street lights, I guess. Okay, batteries on. Let's get the crane and get the thrusters, and then we gotta go over to that mountain. Or oh, kill. Kill, thrusters on, let's go. Where was that mountain? <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> oh man. I can't see it at all. Oh, is that it? Maybe that's it? Maybe that's it. I'm gonna guess it's this one. Oh. This weather is a really bad time. Oh, oh. Well, since I don't know if I'm heading to the right mount, the correct mountain, I'm gonna head towards the signal that I definitely know is in this direction. The mountain seemed like a safer bet, but not with a storm. Oh, that's closer. Maybe I had that one. Maybe that is the signal. Oh man, they're popping up everywhere. Oh, jeez. Whoops. Okay, maybe mounting the truck sideways to fit more stuff on the trailer was not my best idea. I'm probably not going to have much of the front end left by the time I get home. <laughs> there are some of you that are probably going to be thinking about that uh, little highway section that we just were at. And how in the early days of this mod, I had a lot of it made out of heavy armor because I thought it looked interesting. Except it ended up being an excessive source of grids. You ended up with like 60 or 80 grids from it. I was like, Ooh, okay. Yeah, that's breaking. Oh, it's a crane. I haven't seen a crane yet. Oh, 
Now there's a reason I'm excited about a crane. That is a very small chance, but it is a chance that there are two really, really nice things in that crane. One is a tier three tool and the other is a basic assembler so I can convert ammo types into more useful ammo types. Ooh. I wonder what this one is. Wonder if it's going to give me anything good. Because there's a high risk that I'm going to need to bring this thing down, I'm going to park at a distance. But I might use my searchlight to inspect first. I can't tell if that's a container. There's some more cryopods. A couple of things. Oh, I don't know if that's a cargo container or not. I'm going to have to climb up and find out. Alright, let's do it. I think it's a cargo container. Anything good in you before I go up there? Ah, I'm just climbing up. Let's go. It's a long way to go. Let's start climbing. Now, if it is a basic assembler, I then have to figure out how I'm going to get it down. I mean, even if it's a small cargo... Actually, a small cargo I probably don't need to worry about. Alright. That's the ladder done. Step one. Now we need to hack you. Ooh, 15 metal grids. Oh. Oh. I did drop my spare, my good tools back in the truck just in case something went wrong. And we got a tier three grinder. And we have a small cargo container. Okay. Battery though. Ooh. How are we going to do this? I think for me, the most valuable thing is the stuff from this cockpit don't think I'm really all that worried about the rest of it, so I may just drop this once I grab that. Let's get those grids out, because then I actually have enough grids to build four small cargo containers, which is amazing. All right, down we go before I get myself killed. Now, I could do the cheeky thing and try and jump off and grab hold of this again after I've fallen a bit, but I'd rather not die. <laughs> oh, so many grids. I'm rich. <laughs> I can rebuild both of the ones in the back of that, um, like, new building that I added. Yeah. That's great. All right, let's grab the tools out again. So what I'm thinking is this. Get rid of the drill off there. Have the tier 3 elite grinder on there. So I can do quick grinding or slow grinding. Speedy or safe. I'm going to cut this thing down. Let's see what survives. I should quickly check these and see if there's anything I really want. Ooh, there's a thruster on top of that. The smokestack is a thruster. I want that. Let's take you back. Actually, before I run back with that, let's grab the components out of here. Oh, speed! Look at the speed! Oh, yes! It's so good! I can get stuff so, so fast. I can accidentally grind so many things I don't want to. <laughs> oh, I love it. Anything in this dog excavator that I want? I don't think there is. What about you? Anything new? Not Inventory really. Inventory full. Oops. I've, so I've got four Atmo thrusters from this trip. And a hydrogen thruster. Not too shabby. Okay, now it should be good to cut down. Hope I don't kill myself. <laughs> I'm not going to try and bring this down safely, although it would be a decent opportunity to practice it. But this is more fun. Oof. Timber! Oh, it's going to destroy the cargo container. No. No, it's not. Uh, what is it going to do? Oh, bounce. Oh. oh, it did destroy the cargo container in the end. Oh. Okay, don't do that with the assembler. That would be bad. Oh. Get some large... Oh, lots of large steel tubes in there. Okay, I can drive over now. I wonder if I can find that hill before dark. It's 4.30, it's going to get dark soon. There was a battery on there, so I'm going to see where the battery is. I think it's in this, um, the weight section makes sense batteries are heavy now switch to the other one and i've been given some advice about hacking large grid batteries and i'm going to see if it holds 
holds up. It's consistent with when I got lucky and got one of them ground down and hacked without losing any components. So we get rid of the construction components. Down to seven. So let's grab two. Weld it back up. And then we grind. Grind. Nope. Grind. Ooh. Ooh. There are no computers in there. Uh, let's grab one of these. Battery. Transfer to me. Yay. Probably didn't need to do that. But did it, because sometimes when I weld back up instantly, it, or immediately, it seems to then get rid of some of my power cells. I don't know. There we go. Another battery. Today's been a pretty good haul. Obviously would have been epic if I'd managed to get an assembler in there. That would have been pretty awesome. But I'm still very happy with my thrusters and my grids. Oh man, the grids. So many grids. Yeah. Bring that across a little bit further. Can I get this down onto one of those things? Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> I just grabbed that in time. Oh, man. That was more risk than I should have taken with that. Oh, wow. Being here, I really do feel isolated. In the middle of a sea of dunes where I can only see that one tiny mountain over there. And as I crest it... Uh, I can still kind of see it. But even even zoomed out in third person, all I see are dunes and dunes and dunes. Maybe a bit of scrap this way. I think that's something. Probably someone's base in the end. Oh, no, that looks like a... Is that a helicopter? That might be another one of the Chinook-style helicopters, the dual rotor blades. Now, I don't think... I can really carry this. I've got the other one back at home, so it feels less necessary to try and get this all the way. As is. As much as I might enjoy it. Hot knife through butter, this is. Even on a door, it's not too bad. Yes. I'm so happy to have this grinder. I think I might just try and grab what bits I really want from this. And I think this is the last bit that's useful on there that I want right now. Drop this up on the tray. Oh, I'm sorry, Chopper. I'm going to have to leave you. Tory Much as I would love to bring it. Full. I just don't think it's the right thing to do right now. And homeward bound, because it's getting dark. i got 17 k's to travel. It's pretty much on the way home. I'll try and get that scrap that I saw at the top of the hill. See if there's anything I really need to grab, because I don't have any space left on the flatbed, really. Or at least any accessible space. So whatever I pick up, I'm going to have to carry with the crane. All the way home. Unless I put more on more uh, landing gears onto the crane. Ooh. I should probably not go that fast over the crest of a mountain. Crest of a sand dune, I should say. We have a wind turbine. What else do we have? Some fences I should slow down. Got a shed. And a bit of a silo. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Um. Oh, that warhead went active as I ground it. Oh, that was lucky. It took me a moment to realize that I was grounding, like grinding down something that looked like a boombox, and then I saw the warhead, and I saw the warhead go active. I can't believe I got that lucky. Was it? I don't know how long that countdown is, but I could have easily been exploded. Let's see if I can get this under here. That's one. I fit these two batteries under there as well. This feels like it's um, prime for exploding when I offload that truck. Bring these under here. But it seems like it's going to work. Locked down. Perfect. That's all the bits I actually want. Let's get going. I know some people are going to be upset with me leaving the wind turbine, but I think I just gotta. I'm pretty loaded up here. Oh. Oh. Found another highway section. What do we have here? That looks unhealthy. 
Anything good? Oh, a drill. Do I really need another drill? I've got two. A couple of batteries. Uh-oh. Ow! <laughs> Whoops. Yeah, it looks like whatever was in the back is long gone. There's a lot of zappy things around here. The dead. What about you? You've got a battery. And a drill. Guess I could pick this jalopy up with the crane and just take the whole thing. Yeah, alright. Let's do it. Come with me, battery. Pop you on the trailer. Six kilometers from home. If I find something better than a drill and an incomplete battery, I will trade it. But I guess... Can't pass these things up just in case. Alright, on jalopy. Picked up. And we'll hang it over backwards a little... No, we'll hang it over the front. Because that doesn't mess with my camera. Home base. Six kilometers in the storm and the dark. Alright, I guess I have to offload all of the things. Yay! <laughs> I'm back at base now. I've let myself have my little procrastination distraction thing by going out and collecting a whole bunch more loot. I need to come back and I need to fix this forklift so that it can actually be something useful. To do that, I think I need to probably out loud talk through what I actually want this thing to achieve more than just I want it to lift up above the height of a single large grid block. Because that's not really enough. That's not all I want it to do. I want this to be able to pull stuff off the flatbed, maybe even take it out and about with me to put stuff onto the flatbed so that I don't need to use my crane for everything. Because wouldn't it be nice to just be able to drive up to a wreck, grab onto it, lift it up, put it on the flatbed, drive away, grab the next one, put it on? Like, would that potentially be faster? Especially if the flatbed gets bigger? Would that potentially be faster to put stuff on there? I, I don't know, but it is something I wonder as to whether the crane does too much. And I still want the crane, don't get me wrong. I'm just wondering whether it does more than I need it to and maybe a properly designed forklift or forklift alternative would actually do better. Now, I had a lot of comments about the double batteries. The double batteries were my attempt to get this thing to be compact and heavy. It wasn't about power supply because you don't need that much power for this thing because it's going to be within range of a power source pretty much all the time. It's not ever going to need to do anything. Long range and stuff like that. So I don't need it to do that. So I, so I don't need the batteries for power. But I thought, oh yeah, look, I've got two of these. They're heavy. Let's stick them together and see if that works. It didn't. <laughs> um, it's probably ended up making the mass a bit too high. This form factor, this size of vehicle, I actually kind of like. I like that it's this tiny, but I'm actually thinking I may scrap the big batteries altogether. Because then I might be able to make something just on a slightly larger platform, so... Step one is making it odd width instead of even, which will allow me to put a single piston for the forks at the front or piston separated by a gap, then another piston. Because although this design works perfectly in single player, it does not like being on the server at all. We're going to ditch that. So it'll probably go a block wider, which means I will also potentially go a block longer. But yeah, that's, that's where I'm thinking. So I'm actually going to leave this as is and build a fresh design starting from scratch. So I brought with me, I actually might bring the flatliner over so it's a bit closer. I brought with me one, two, three, four, five, six small batteries. I have, qu <laughs> yeah, quite a few small batteries there, which is good. So I don't, so I think I should have enough power with those little batteries for me to use them as the basis of my new telehandler slash forklift. 
Start with you and you. And since you're loose, I'll take you inside. Which with all the other electronics. So step one is convert one of these into a lift. <laughs> so that I can build the vehicle off it. So if I just pop this on the ground, then pop... Actually, I put a landing gear straight on this. So it's locked down. What I can do is this. Landing gear. Cool. Pick it up. Spin it around. And plonk it. Oh, nope. <laughs> plonk it on the ground, but switch lock. Let it rock to level. Then I'll let it relock. And now I've got a nice perfect platform that has a little has enough power to run a piston. So I can then put piston. And then start building my forklift platform off this. And because I'm building a forklift, let's pick a colour. Rather than having a no colour build, let's start with a colour. And then I can adapt the colour over time. If I choose to. But I want to start with a colour. I'm not going to start with grey or white. I'm starting with a colour. Colour in rust? No. Colour in... Ooh, no. <laughs> dust? Maybe we'll start with dust. Dusty yellow. I'm going to stick with the 2x2 two two wheels. Because one by one wheels just aren't going to cut it if I want to take this thing anywhere but on perfectly flat ground. One by ones just do not work. But two by twos, they give us enough clearance while not needing the same clearance between each other as three by threes do. So I do like the two by twos. As mentioned previously, I am going to stick to the regular wheel suspensions, not the shorts, because same reasons as the issues with the forks this needs to have that for safety now let's just extend that a bit longer i could if i do a telehandler have it be this long which is a whole three blocks longer than the current design well maybe not it may only be two blocks longer than the current design which is still pretty compact it does make movement a little more difficult because the wheels are going to fight the middle wheels are going to fight the turn so let's not let's try just four wheels this doesn't need to go fast so i think four wheels is better one two three let's but let's put four blocks in between them then on this side we go with the same thing two by two lefts there and there so, thinking of this like a, what I've had people show me as an idea for a telehandler, I should be able to put a hinge on the back here, with a couple of pistons down the middle, and a hinge on the far end. So the hinges can move it up and down, while we move pistons to push it forward and back. So it can reach higher. Uh, that'll make more sense shortly. Probably. <laughs> Hopefully. I'm thinking of actually having the hinge over the back, the rearmost, because that's going to put the longest lever in front of it, so all the weight will push on these front wheels, but from further, but further from the fulcrum. So the further back I can push, push the fulcrum, I think that's right in this turn, the better. But I'm just not sure if I want to put it all the way back an extra two blocks, because that's an extra meter longer. I guess if I do that, I have the option of putting the extra wheel set on. We can start with that and see how it goes. Then I was planning on putting pistons straight on the hinge. Another piston. Then we go with another hinge on the end here so that the load can be kept level. So I could now just put a mag plate straight on here. Which would make this useful for moving around the scrap that hasn't yet been put on pallets. Which is one of the purposes for this. But... There's something that was suggested in the comments that I kind of like the idea of. Which is, instead of having the pallets on shelves in here, maybe have the pallets be the shelves. What I mean by that is, make the pallet so it can just mag plate itself to the wall. And that's how I stack them up. But if I want to be able to do that, I'm going to, need be, I'm going to need to be able to control that mag plate that's locking it to the wall. If I'm going to do that, I probably want a connector between my handler and the pallet. 
so I've got that uh, communication possible between uh, through them so that, that can work but uh, I'm just not sure how to equip this with both options I may well have like actually if I like this design I might just make two of them that would probably be an even better idea in fact that might be a far better idea have one for handling pallets and one for handling everything else. So I'm going to drop this down so that it's got a mag plate here. I don't want to use the big mag plate because it gets a bit awkward to get it in and around spaces. But I don't want this to be up at full height because if we drop this hinge down all the way to, my, to minus 90, that's still going to be above the height of things like small batteries until I tilt this hinge down. And then I can get pretty much down to ground height. So that's why I'm going to probably need to have both of these independently controlled as I think this through. But yeah, this is my idea for the telehandler. It is a much, much longer base. Possibly too long. I'm going to finish this and I'm going to test it. And then I'll see if I have to make it shorter. So let's get the wheels built. We'll get a couple of batteries into the frame and get a cockpit on it. Get a programmable block on it and see see if I can make it work. Huh. Kind of like that this sort of looks like a stick insect in its current form. <laughs> now let's get this little battery ready to link on there. And much like the other forklift design, set up the rear wheels as the primary steering, but I'm going to leave a little bit on the front just because it helps with SE. It's just one of those things that I've found with my previous designs of things like this. Having a little bit of steer on the front made it so I could move a little bit more reliably in the direction that I intended to go. How to get a cockpit on here now that I've done this? So I don't think those pistons are going to like having a cockpit right next to them there. I think I almost need to go with uh, like one of those cockpits uh, one of these ones, the rover ones. Buggy cockpit out here. Something like this. Should be able to make that look better with a bit of shaping around here. Okay. This is... This is kind of... I like this. <laughs> I like the weirdness of this design. Uh, I dislike that I'm driving on the left. I, I will need to fix that and put the cockpit on the other side to make it feel more normal to me. But I... I I quite, I quite like the weirdness of this. The spindliness. But, is it small enough to fit comfortably through... Uh -oh. <laughs> uh, of course. Lock myself straight to the ramp. Is this small enough to comfortably fit through the ramp? Oh yeah, easy. And if I just have sort of three rows of things that need to be handled here, I could possibly even increase the steer on these. Give myself an even tighter turning circle. So I feel like they're probably quite safe. So I should be able to... I'm imagining three rows of stuff. One in the middle, one on each side wall. Maybe some stuff on the back. So what I need to be able to do is turn from going straight to putting something against the wall within that space that I've got. And this is pretty good. I feel like I can do it with a cup, like a three or a five point turn. That's not bad. Obviously need to substantially change the power settings on the wheels and the speed and all that. But so far, I'm quite happy with this. Up strength. So slow. Less power. Lots of suspension strength so I don't rock around. Lots of steering so I can do this. And almost... I'd be probably pretty close to being able to do a full U-turn within the space that I'd leave myself between the rows. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm liking this is a different design. I'm wishing I'd put a different block underneath the whole thing. Uh, underneath that hinge at the back, because having a full square block there is going to be kind of ugly. But maybe we can work with it. Yeah, I'm, I'm liking this. Next question is, can I make it so that I can manipulate this crane? Ooh, I scrape. 
Yeah, that's another reason to try and figure out a way to replace that block. Um, how would I best do that? If I... Aha! If I do this, put hinge here, take off hinge part, put hinge part on here, and attach. Please don't explode. Good. Then I can grind out this. Grind out the hinge. And then I can trade this up for something that's got a little bit of a slope because I want something that looks a little bit robust, but that. I probably have to take out the hinge part actually as well. And I should be able to put a hinge down here. Like so. Ground, grind away the hinge part. All this side, I don't have to... Highlight the hinge part for me, please. Right. Come on, stop being like that. Oh, why is this being so hard? It keeps popping up for like half a second. Oh, there we go. <gasps> no! It got the wrong hinge part. Oh, you monster. Okay, maybe I'll get lucky with it just lying there. Maybe I didn't need to do this at all because it actually is just sitting there ready for me to reattach it. <sighs> okay. I did all that for nothing. That was a much easier way of doing it. I could have just attached the whole thing and rebuilt it. Okay. So that's a little bit of a curve on there, which is good. A little bit of a slope. Now, we get rid of this because I want it on the other side. Which is going to annoy so many people. But I don't care. <laughs> it's what I'm used to and it's what I'm doing. Alright, four batteries. Let's get the, uh, let's get the cockpit back on. Uh, I might sneak an event controller in and the programmable block in underneath the cockpit here. Event controller for docking and programmable block for park script. Now, just trying to decide whether I want it further forward or further back. So I kind of want to test it here. I'm going to test with the build state and see if this dislikes having that right there. With the pistons. It's a risky ploy, but it does look a lot neater. And it does seem to be okay. Let's try it again in full build, because sometimes the build states are different, have different collisions to the regular thing. So usually, in my experience, the build states are the bigger bit. Okay. That's good. I just had a thought. I wonder if I can figure out the speed that the pistons need to extend so that they keep the hinge and the load right close to the front here as I lift this hinge. Because obviously, as it's currently working, if I have the hinge operating independently, when I get up to about here, the load is now over the tractor. Which isn't what I want. I'd want it to be in front of it. Still. So if I can do... Even through brute forcing, just by trying different speeds. If I can have the pistons and the hinge on the same control that just goes up and down. Then I can just have a second control for this distal hinge. And that's it. Really simple controls. Oh, I so want to see if I can do that. I presume mathematically it's, it's possible, but... <laughs> Whether I can do it is another matter. All right, I'm doing this. Oh wait, how much power do you have? Eleven hours while you're just sitting there. Cool. Let's flick these programmable blocks and event controllers around so that they make sense with the new design idea. One of the things that I both like and dislike about the scrapyard style of play is how much it encourages you to just do things. Uh oh, that wasn't good. How much it encourages you to just do things half-baked rather than trying to do it properly the first time. And I'm going to try really hard now that I've got enough blocks around here to do as much of this properly as I can. And we'll see how many episodes that lasts. Because <laughs> knowing what I'm like, it's probably not that many. Oh, oh no. No. <sighs> I just realized something. 
No. Actually, no. I'm I'm sticking with this. What I've realized is I don't need to lift up the cockpit. Because I'm not lifting it up and out of the way of the wheels and the pistons, although I probably still want to lift it up out of the way of the wheels. Since it doesn't interact with the pistons, I could have put it exactly where the programmable lock and the event controller are. However, it's a part of me that kind of likes it being lifted up like this. As just something a bit different. I just, I just, I don't know, I kind of like it. Obviously we're going to need some lights on this thing. Doesn't need super long range lighting though. I'm thinking offset spots like that. A little bit of hazard for some detail. Might even put a few more bits around the place. I like using the paneling to get my hazard paint on there rather than using the full blocks. As I think it it adds it in details where you've got a bit more control, like spots where you've got a bit more control over where it's gonna end up. I quite like this. <laughs> Something different to what I felt. Yeah, I quite like this. I might fit this thing. Uh, gyro. Where am I going to put a gyro? I suppose I could do the same on this side as I've done on the other side, but just stick a gyroscope on top of a block like that. Let's just see how long this battery is really going to last. Actually, pretty good. It should last a fair amount of time, like with accelerating an hour of power. I do need to figure out where I'm going to put the connector on this so that I can hook up to the base and get power. So I should probably figure that out before I go too much further. I suppose it could actually sneak in at the front. If I lift this up and probably have a connector here. Seems as good a spot as any. Now, how do I want to get this to connect up to the base though? Especially as there have been a few discoveries recently about what causes some weird... Um, problems with our stuff like the clanging of that building. Can I get up here? Is that going to be awkward? If I park it around the back here? Let's see. And the turning on turning circle on this thing is as good as I was hoping it was going to be. Though it does take some getting used to rear wheel steering. Oh boy. Oh boy. <laughs> That's a little bit sketchy. I probably want to do something different in the corner there. Make this easier. But... Gets here pretty well. So, if I grind out part of this floor, then what I'm going to do is get a connector. Not a small connector, but a proper big connector. Oops, wrong button. Big connector. And hook it up to the base like this. We'll get that built. And we'll grab the parts that I need for the next phase. Which is a small grid, large connector. So the idea is that I remove all mobile subgrids from the hookup method. So what we've been finding is that this style of hookup with the double hinge then onto the thing that's full of subgrids with a crane and whatnot, for a lot of other people has been ending poorly. So I think getting rid of these subgrids here and just making it all locked down with connectors is actually a lot better. I don't know for certain, but we are quite suspicious. So, if I instead go from a connector to a connector to a connector, they're all locked. There's nothing able to move, there's nothing able to go weird. It should all just work. So I can switch lock, and then drive this up and see what height I need the small connector to be at. Set it up at that height, and connect. Oh, perfect. Comes straight off that connector. And now I should be able to just roll up and lock. Yeah! Those batteries all go to recharge, which means I'll always have full batteries on this thing. Excellent. And this doesn't look too messy either. And I bet with a bit of time and a bit of effort, I could probably make this look really cool using small grid armor blocks to tidy it up a bit further as well. Uh, but i got to think about that. I'm not sure how I want to do that. I don't know what I want to make it look like <laughs> at this stage. So I'll just leave it. And never come back to it, because nothing is more permanent than a temporary solution. Now that the crane is up, I can paint these bits. Yes, I really like this. I really, really like how this is turning out. Uh, use Nev's block picker mod to get the block I want. There we go. Got warning. Paint stripes. 
painted. I just got to set up park for the control of the crane. And I can see if this thing's actually going to be quicker at getting stuff moved around the base than my existing methods. Uh, I need that gyro as well. Especially if I'm going to be continuously driving up this until I fix it. Come on, little forklift of shame. You drive around here too, and I'm going to steal one of your for one of your gyros. Come on. Get up the slope. Up the ramp. Up the ramp you go. Yeah. All right, need a couple of weld pads. What? Why can't I pick this up now? I've never been able to pick these up before. Why can't I pick this up now? I couldn't even pick it up before. Let's just change by putting the world pad on it. I'm so confused. <laughs> it's so weird. I have no idea why that happened. Now it should be a lot safer to walk up and down. Walk up and down, drive up and down. This ramp a bit, because I've got a little bit of control with the gyro. In fact, this thing's so light, I've probably got quite a lot of control with it. Yeah, I have a lot of control with that gyro. For tipping back, especially. But I can also do that. <laughs> oh, I said something stupid before. <laughs> uh, I need the pistons to move at different speeds depending on where in the hinges arc they are to keep the mass at its correct position going forward. But... At least moving at point one doesn't seem too bad. This seems all right. Though I may want to have a separate control for the pistons as well, so I've got an additional one. But this, I'm pretty happy. I can control the end of it. I can control my lift. I should probably have the mag plate on the hotbar. I'm going to set up the pistons so they've got an additional control point as well. So they'll move with the hinge all the time, but also be able to move independently. And I should probably set up an independent hinge control too, so that I've got full options available to me. There we go. Uh, let's recompile the script. And now I should be able to do this to... That's not the way I wanted that to move when I did that. Oh, maybe it is. Maybe it is. So I'm just controlling the hinge there, and similarly just controlling the pistons here. But, if I want to make my life easier, I can just do both at the same time. Not with that, with this. Oh, so good. Okay, now for the real test. Let's try and get something inside. Something like, I don't know, that engine right in front of me that I grabbed last time and almost exploded the other lift with. I can grab it. Lock. Lift. Nope, wrong way. Lift. So I can do simple movements like this pretty easily. In fact, I may want to have... Hmm. No, believe it me. But I say I may want to have controls for doing that simple lift while in the cockpit control rather than having to switch over to the remote control every time. But I think I'll leave it for now. Now that's going to hit as I go up, so let's switch over. Let's go up. Drop it down a bit. Then we can drive up the ramp. Definitely don't want the ramp right next to the door. That is not ideal. Then I might put this next to my hydrogen tanks over here. And unlock. And that is something that I reckon I will get better at and gradually get quicker at doing. But for now, it's not too slow. That wasn't too bad. It wasn't the best, but it wasn't the worst. Yeah. Yeah. I'm so happy with this. <laughs> I'm so happy with this little design. It actually... This is... This is what I was hoping would happen after putting a terrible design out there, showing you guys me doing something stupid with it, and then reading through all of your suggestions. I know I didn't get a chance to reply to all of them, but I did read pretty much every single comment on there and came to the conclusion that this was my better design approach given the limitations of Space Engineers. 
One of the nice things about this approach should become evident when I try and pick up this battery that's attached over here. Because that fulcrum, that hinge base that's on my telehandler here is a long way back. When I pick up something heavy like this battery, hopefully I shouldn't tip forward. Because the front end doesn't have to be as heavy to stop me from tipping forward. Let's unlock from this base here, which will be, I think, yep, this one. Can I hop in? Can I drive away? I can. Can I drive away far? Oh, 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 oh. Okay. So a little bit of ballast might not go astray here. <laughs> A battery is probably the heaviest thing I plan to lift up with this setup. I want to see if I can get that battery all the way around to the other side. Okay, we're locked. We will lift. Hey, with the suspension more stiff, this is actually holding for now. Oh, look at that. Yeah! Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> nope. Nope, nope. Having to use the gyro to compensate? Not ideal. I wonder what the heaviest thing I've got access to is. It's probably those ba the little batteries. As in the densest thing, I should say. Because what I want to do is add something dense at the back end so that I can have heavier stuff at the front here. And with the limited blocks that can be built there are limited options there like is a small cargo container full of stone more dense than a battery i don't know i might have to look into this but i love that i'm able to move this thing around even though i'm not doing it particularly uh sensibly and i am definitely cheesing it with the uh, gyro. That's pretty awesome. That's really awesome. Yes! <laughs> oh wait, I gotta lift up the crane so that I can go and park on my connector. Arguably the only thing missing from this is a warning light. Uh, which I'm thinking about putting on here but I'm also thinking about not because it can get annoying. The flickering. <laughs> Well, I think you can probably tell at this point that I am very happy with how my little telly handle, handle of forklift replacement has come together. I probably didn't need to put four <laughs> pistons on it, but I wasn't thinking about how it actually worked when I put the four on there. I was just thinking, oh yeah, I need to be able to lift up more than two meters vertically. And the hypotenuse, is that the right word? for a right angle triangle with a two meter vertical is going to be more than two meters so I need lots of pistons but I've already got length in there from the length of the pistons because the hinge is actually doing the lifting for those bits so it ended up being less and then I ended up making it much bigger than it needs to be but this thing is going to be able to reach up like four blocks high which is pretty cool so I'm very happy with it next time I'm hoping to use this to do some decorative work around the base maybe even do some more well definitely do some more looting but maybe do some prep towards something else something a bit bigger which is something i might get the community involved in later but basically i want to make an arena because i want to do some little fun competitions amongst people <laughs> to, to see what sort of cranes and forklifts and stuff people have built and how well they work and how poorly mine do by comparison Maybe I don't want to do this. Oh well, we'll find out soon. So this is all that and plenty more to come. And I will see you then.